don't you hear like some wheezing? I think he's having some uh, asthma, asthma and, yeah. uh, and bronchospasm. There's definite okay. wheezing there. Here? Okay, yeah. we're going to deepen the anesthesia and give him some medication now. I'm here in the high fidelity simulation space with Professor Sal Baldelli. Professor, what's going on here today? Well, it's um, simulated the uh, operating room where we recreate the real environment of an operating room and we put the participant into the context of uh, managing a serious issue happening to a real patient which is in fact a very high uh, fidelity and technological mannequin. Maybe we can have a look at the mannequin if you want. It's kind of uh, recreating uh, the whole body, although it's very difficult, but it has its own uh, Physi physiological model. It can yeah. breathe by, on its own. It can. It has a heartbeat. Uh, it has a simulated cardiac output. It has yeah. simulated uh, heart sounds and lung sounds. That sounds incredible. So it's the mannequin that is so innovative. Particularly, you've just inserted it into the usual patient setup. Why is this kind of simulation practice important? There are some rare events in the operating room that it's difficult to train. For example and also some uh, specific competence that we call uh, non-technical skills or crew resource management skills. You cannot do it in a safe way elsewhere than in a simulation room like that. So Professor, can I get a chance to rescue this patient? Okay, it looks to me that he has some abnormal breathing here, so... Oh yeah, from the I screen? Yes, from the screen oh. here. So I suggest that uh, you're going to have a listen to his lungs. Great. See, everything is okay, so grab the stethoscope. Don't you hear like some wheezing? I think he's having some uh, asthma, asthma and, uh, yeah. and bronchospasm. There's definite wheezing okay, there. Here. Okay, we're yeah. going to deepen the anesthesia and give him some medication now. I put him back to the machine. There's something wrong with him. I'm glad <laughs> you're looking into it. So thank you so much for letting me rescue this patient, Professor. Now we're going to have a talk to some of the participants who you've got coming in. Of course, it was a pleasure. In the simulation space, we have two rooms. The high fidelity room, in which we are for the moment, but also we have a second room, which we call procedural room, in which we teach specific technical uh, procedures uh, for airways or venous access, for example. Uh, today, we have been teaching uh, crisis scenarios that is a situation of uh, anesthesia crisis. That is a situation uh, which are very difficult to manage for people and during which uh, anxiety and stress is very high and for which the physicians who are involved in this uh, situation have both technical problems because it's very difficult to think about everything which is needed to do and also to manage the group. That is what we call the team or the non-technical skills. In the second part of the scenario, what we do is what we call debriefing. Debriefing is a short session. Uh, in, the, in the sim space, we have a 20, 25 minute duration of the debriefing. And during this period, everybody is going to talk with the instructors who ask questions and who try to manage so that the participants try to think about things which are important and that they would improve. For myself, I learn uh, a mistake I do so uh, it's, it's okay, it was with not a real patient, so I can do better after. What I take home is that the gaps between my shock moments will be smaller and smaller because I will be having a plan in my head how to act. You learn how to, to communicate, you can learn out of your mistakes, you can see that all your colleagues are in a similar boat of having stress and anxieties. And I think the more you practice these scenarios, the better you get at it. So it becomes more of a routine rather than just being thrown into that scenario with a real patient and then panicking. And it's uh, very easy to go inside the situation. The first step can be a little bit um, artificial, but it goes very quick and very good uh, way to, to learn. The training facilities are great. I thought the, the equipment is fantastic. It's really high-end. Um, the training was really good and the team 
explaining everything, how, how it works. Everyone has been very reassuring and very calming and very friendly and professional. So I think it's a really great setup um, to come here and do that. It's nice to know how to deal with the critical uh, moments in our practices. We are not getting them a lot and it's better to be prepared because you never know what's coming next in your room. Euroanesthesia TV is brought to you from Euroanesthesia 2019, the European Anesthesiology Congress. For more videos from the Congress, make sure to click these links and subscribe for much more from the world of medicine.